add to what, as I agree with Pam, I will add that one of my strong components is that Greer Militzer, which now can be a two-lane street mm -hmm. because there's no drive through for City Hall, actually would have storefronts along it. And we've got that yeah. grid pattern that you see, so you can just imagine Warren and Claremont County traffic with about, I'm thinking I heard 58 additional parking spaces added to what we already have, coming down from Warren and Claremont County and being able to make a right turn right into a, a full two-way street that not only is a street, but has sidewalks and has storefronts, has our street lights down them. And then you're really adding to the grid pattern of it. And they can then enter what would be a significant amount of parking because it has always been known that if we're going to get this funding together, we're certainly going to get the money to go on the other side of the rail car and turn that into a nice parking area. Because gravel means half of what you could get. Light that up, put your parking over there too. We're really adding some significant parking right in the heart of town. You're allowing people to not all have to go to Paxton's to get to it. And I like that storefronts continuing along Greer Militzer. It's, it's a full, people will have a Greer Militzer address. And I think that really helps to the, this is one thing I've dealt with in my two and a half years, there's traffic flow. And that would really allow those people who come down that hill to make a quick right. So one of the things I would throw out there as well is, um, to Pam's point is, and, and maybe you all can lend some insight into this, I, I'm just throwing it out as a question, is can we do a project that doesn't have a residential component and still generate the revenue that we want to do. I think that's an important yeah, question. And that, yeah, and that's key. That's the thing is, I mean, I can have, we can all have great ideas, but if it doesn't make sense financially, obviously we're not going to do it. Right. Right. So, so to, well, to, the good thing is you, you have a, a close comparison it's across the street. Yeah. So we don't really have to guess real hard what, what the environment is today. Nobody knows what is tomorrow. That place is filled up. I would venture to guess that the uh, rent over there is in the 18 to 20, yeah. plus pass-through expenses, which are pretty low because of the component of spreading it out to the apartments and and the, the street level retail. So, you know, if, if on a on a just to do quick math on a 10,000 square foot footprint, that will generate you know in a five-year lease average with a two to three percent bump a year. That's two hundred thousand dollars a year in rent paid if the project is full on the first floor. If you go to sell that on a capitalization rate, it's worth two and a half million dollars. The question is how do we, have, do we get it to there? So back to your point, Pam, where, you know, where are we going to start? You know, just right. Tons of balls up in the air. With, and that's typical of this kind of public-private redevelopment partnership. Very typical. Um, and, and go back to Ken's three models. I mean, all three of the they're used all over the place throughout Ohio. Well, typically, just to clarify, typically those models, again, traditional design bid build, design build, and then the CM at risk model, which are typically where the, the public entity, city, village, county, township, typically is, is the owner of the project. And a lot of times you see that in you're, you're building a new city building only, a new fire station, a new salt bar, a new public services department. Okay. Um, I guess the reason that I approached council a few weeks ago, and, and, and you all here, uh, with the, the model that I see more of when you do start to introduce revenue generating or lease held improvements, you know, the preferred developer you know, model, uh, that's why I threw that out. And again, my <coughs> rationale, if you're giving your rationale, uh, I've you know, got a lot of kind of a, a blunder going on in my brain here. I've got, again, I'm coming from 15 years being a city guy. Okay, um, doing a lot of what, what Dave does. Uh, I've got the last 11 years being private sector. We're now doing a lot of the private sector and public sector, but you know, talking a lot with architects, developers, and commercial you know, real estate firms. Uh, and then my third kind of thing going on in my head is I'm a you know, tax partner. I'm a resident. resident. Yeah. You know, so uh, you know, so you know, I've, I've, I've made no bones about it. You know, uh, I still believe that. In, right now from what, what little I've seen, and I've not seen all the data, all the whatever pro formas you, I think you've worked up you know, some, right. but, um, but again, even before looking at those, you know, it, um, you know having a, a city or the city of Loveland, uh, you know, bear that risk, you know, of leasing that first floor. It's the first floor that gives me pause. Upper, upper, floor, upper floors of residential, whether you do them or not, 
that, that's, I don't have too much of a say so on that. I will tell you that that's the easiest part of the development <coughs> to do. They will, whether it's now apartments, now condos, there could be some debate, but you can, you can rent, lease out apartments right now for the foreseeable future, like our case. Yeah, so that's the easy part if city council wanted to go the residential route and piece of it. So I'm trying to distill this down to you know where I'm coming from with my concerns is is that first floor residential, whether it's you know obviously you know it's built for you know retail. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, resident uh, re restaurant, bar maybe you know you know combos stuff up front, and you get in some you know issues which you know Carl's a retail guy where, where you, you, you start losing visibility from the street. You know I might start questioning you know the viability the marketability of retail that far back. You know, I'd start looking at office, uh, professional services, a doctor, you know, something where it's more destination. You know, I, I'm looking for it, not just having to, you know, cruising by and see it, because you won't be able to see it except for maybe some sort of little signage. So again, I keep coming back to ownership, and um, and the, even that is that that is a tough uh, nut to crack because, again, how your question, how, how do you start here? I, I would start looking at <clears throat> the various pieces, the various elements of the deal. Okay, um, you know, what do we know? We know that you would like a new city council space. You've done some upfront programming where you've got how much square feet you think you'd like. Well, you've done a lot of programming, you know, you know uh, uh, second floor perhaps. Um, you know, do we have estimates yet on the TIF revenue? I you know we definitely want to TIF the property. You know, can we get a 30 year TIF through the school or is it a 10 year TIF? And again, these, I don't know these answers yet, yeah, maybe you do. Um, you know what? Um, how much? Another question. How much? You know, based on your initial programming that MSP has done for the second floor, what's the estimated cost of that? Okay, because you're going to have to pay for that. Um, another element, which I think you have had this time to think, um, if you've had the property appraised, what does this property appraise at for raw ground value? That's another element. Because again, I'm looking from the city side, my city hat on. I'm looking at what assets do I have? Because right now, okay, in terms of uh, development. Play with. I've got X amount of money from the value of this raw ground minus demo demolition. Okay, so the, the net you know, the raw ground cost. I've got a TIF revenue stream. You know, and again, meaning um, we'd like to take some TIF revenue and put it to other uses after we pay off the infrastructure. For but again, that's something that we can offer and we say, hey, any public infrastructure that we do need as a result of this project which really is not much out that way. It's probably going to be mostly back here with, with the public parking, you know, which is typical, and, and some other public improvements outside. So I'm starting to, I, I'm trying to identify, or I would try to identify, what are the, what are the assets that we have? Uh, what's the cost of the new city space? Okay. And start piecing this together. I'm trying to get to a point where it says, okay, um, if, if we go with one of those first three models where the city would be the owner, you know, and take the higher risk. Um, what kind of risk are we talking about? You, you, you know, what, what, what types of bonds are we going to have to float? You know, what's the debt service? And, and, I, and I, knew, I think you started on some of this discussion. I, I don't know how far in you've gone. And, and it's going to come down to you, what you're at, you know, city councils and what you need to. What's, what's the appetite for your risk? You know, because everything you guys are saying in terms of, you know, the upside from that first floor, it absolutely could happen. And I could also go through scenarios, we all could, that where it, the, the, the flip side of that could be where, particularly with, if you look at the business cycle, if you talk to economists right now, that gives me a lot of concern now, that in about a year and a half, two years, there's another blip on the radar coming, uh, particularly in our, in our in development world. You know, so that'd be coming online then. You know, so what's the appetite for risk of, of that lease, you know, the, the rents versus, you know, having to you know, pay the debt service for that okay, in, in a city owned model. So again, all kinds of things going on, but again, ownership I think is a big deal. It, it steers well, a lot of where you I guess this is my question, and I'm a very simple kind of girl, okay? Um, and this is, you know, obviously not what I do for a living. Um, where does the conversation start in terms of, okay, we've all determined that we have a great piece of property here, okay? We've all determined that it needs to be repurposed, that it's not being used to the best of its you know, financial ability or anything else you want to say. My question is, is 
do you, all those things we have to address, but you've got to start somewhere. Do you start with a concept? Do you start with a design? Do you start with that idea and then fill in the pieces from all over here in terms of do you determine what you want it to look like? What everyone kind of has in their head as to what you look like, and then you work all that other stuff in there. Is that how it normally works? I mean, I don't. I, I, that's why you guys. Can I interject something here? Yep. I, I I like the terms that you used a little while ago, um, but you're getting. I think to what I'm really interested. What's a property worth? Exactly. Somebody's right. got to tell us what Somebody it's worth. So we've got so to. That, that. So that we can find out. I had an appraisal done. Was it a commercial person or just residential? Yeah, it was something like one man and uh, nine hundred ninety thousand worth of dirt bag and about three. It was nine hundred. Yeah. It was a little bit over a man. Yeah. A little bit over a man. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the dirt was valued at about three forty. Right, without anything on it. What's the difference between the two? Well, the building, building plus ground and ground only. Right. Correct. Awesome. So you take the you take the one point something. Yeah, but it's worth the minus the demo mm -hmm. costs. Kelly's got yeah, that. Kelly's got that. Okay. Well, what's 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 the ground worth, ready ready to develop? In my own small terms, what's that? Value? Okay. I don't know if I can answer that question specifically, but. The appraisal from Miller, Wilkins, and Associates says, in our opinion, the market value as is of the fee simple interest of the subject property as of April 13th, 2016 is 990000 and the market value of the underlying 0.72 acres of land is 345000 So the dirt's worth three, basically 345000 Well, with, yeah. with the asterisk. And got, I got my developer hat right. on now. It's like it's it's three forty five, but I have to take it down first. No, no, no. And so I, did, do you do you have an estimate? That's another element. Like ten grand. Take it down. It's, What's yeah, the demo cost? Ten grand. Ten grand. Just totally yeah. clean, and it's yeah. ready to go. It's, uh, demolition is we we found through the demolition of the uh, bowling alley is there's a lot of people out there. You can get pretty good bids. Um, we were able to take the bowling alley down for. Uh, 20, 25, which is a much bigger structure, and had a tank. So, um, but yeah, that is, I mean, that has to be done. And obviously, the, the city moves and that gets done. Yeah. And again, uh, yeah, there's tons of little elements to fill in the lines. I probably at some point, I'd want to have somebody give me some sort of bid. I, I, I agree, it's going to be in that range. But, but answer your okay. question 345 minus 10,000 for demo, 335. Okay, ground value. So, so I, I say that's, that's, that's a good starting point. Yeah, that, that's real. Now, if we.